My name is Yehuda Greenberg. I grew up in a very from Orthodox household. I went to good yeshivas, good schools, uh, you know, had good grades. You know, I was going to be the next Gadol Adar, the next Rav. And then over the years, things, you know, started to to fall apart. I didn't feel in place. I felt out of place, whether it be in social settings, in family settings, school settings. I just wanted to be okay with myself. I wanted to be okay with my family, who at that point, our, our relationship was strained, obviously. They wanted a path for me that I didn't want for myself, or I didn't know what I wanted for myself, but I knew that I wasn't comfortable with what I was doing. So I started smoking weed. And, you know, I was accepted into a new social setting amongst peers that smoked weed and we had fun. And over time, that then led to other, you know, drugs, substances. Over time, I had developed a habit of taking prescription medications that were unprescribed and included opiates, benzodiazepines, and along with that came a lot of alcohol. One thing led to the next, and the drug usage got worse over time until I developed an addiction, both physical and mentally. But the most important thing about it was that it, it made me feel okay. And I would forget the day come nighttime and come the morning time, I had something to look forward to. Emotionally, I think it was, the best word to describe it was numbness. There was no emotions. It was just me living in this alternate universe that uh, there wasn't emotions. It was so empty. It was just, there was nothing there. I still remember vividly, it was a Friday night. It was at a friend's house eating a Shabbos dinner. And a gentleman that was part of my father's shul, he sat me down and he said, maybe you should think about getting some help. And for the first time I felt if somebody wanted to help me, somebody understood what I was going through. It was eye-opening to me. And I said, sure. Come Sunday, he called me, he said, I spoke to an organization on your behalf. It happened to be Amudim, and he said, you know, we procured a treatment center that you could go get help. And he said, this is when your flight is. Uh, do you want somebody to fly with you? I was in shock. I was nervous, fearful, anxious. I said, no, I'm okay. I was a big boy. <laughs> I said, I'll, I'll fly by myself. It was in California. I went to Chabad Treatment Center. I went not knowing what to expect, and it was the best experience I ever had. It was a place where I belonged. There was no judgment. That for me was the most important thing. It was feeling that I was a part of something that I never felt before. And throughout all this, the healing emotionally began. And a lot of it started with the community, but a lot of it was being okay and comfortable with who I was and who I wanted to be. When I got out of treatment, I then started case management work at a hospital detox. And that's really where things started coming together for me. My job was to talk to people and get them to treatment. That was my job, having those conversations and just opening their eyes to like what life can be and also leaning on my past experiences. It just made it a lot easier seeing somebody go from point A in their lives even to point B. It doesn't have to be A to Z, but getting them into treatment is like the most drastic thing I can do to help somebody. Just like somebody did it for me, it's something I love doing. And I built my self-confidence and people started to lean on me for and whether it was a ride to work or whatever it was, people leaned on me for, for something. And, and now I got married, which is my biggest dream, and God willing, starting a family. And my parents, I, I'm forever grateful. I think they're very proud of what I've done. I don't think I would have been on this path or journey had an organization like them would have not existed. The second they got that call, there was no obstacle. There was no, how much is it? You know, when is it? Let's get them help. I think that was one of the biggest things that Mudim did for me was giving me that ability to say, you know what, I'm ready, I'm, I want to get help, and the rest was taken care of. I'm forever grateful for Amudim for what they provided me, and the, the impact that they made on my life will stand with me forever, wherever I go, and the impact that they make on other people's lives, and I see it on a daily basis, is, is instrumental in, in helping people get better, and helping our communities really get better.